Okay, here's a interesting example. I have a function here that I'm going to begin by commenting out. Uh, and we're going to see what happens when I sort these strings. I don't know if you can imagine what might happen. In other words, what the sort result would be if I were to sort these strings. Um, as you can see, they're ordered uh, in numeric order. Uh, but when I do a sort on them, as you can see, they sort in a rather unusual order. You might want to pause this video and see if you can puzzle out exactly why. So why do we have 1,000 coming before 11 or uh, 100 or 10 uh, coming before 110? Uh, the answer is that these are strings. And as we noted at the beginning with sorted, sorted will sort strings alphabetically or what we learned was ascabetically. With numbers, uh, whether it's alphabetic or ascabetic doesn't matter. The fact is it's sorting these as if they were strings. So if you think of one as a character and zero as a character that comes before one, then one, uh, let's see, one, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, 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 that all makes sense. That would be as if you thought of one and zero as like, let's say, B and A. Um, sorting it alphabetically means they're coming out this way. Now, here's the challenge. Can you come up with a function, or really a function result, that would accept an argument, right? One of the arguments, in other words, it would be applied to each of the items in X. Can you come up with a function that returns a value that would be a value by which we would like these to be sorted. I'd like these to be sorted as if they were integers. I would like them to be sorted numerically. Question is this, what function could you apply to every item so that they would sort numerically? You might want to pause the video, give it a shot, and then we'll take a look at the answer. Okay, what's the answer? we need to see these numbers as if they were integers, or these strings rather, as if they were integers. And so we're going to change the function so that it returns integers. Now, of course, as before, as with the other example, the objects are not being changed. They're not actually being changed. They're only being sorted as if they had been changed. So clearly, Python is applying this function to each item, or rather we could say the sorted function, is applying this function to every item, one at a time. In other words, it calls func six times, applying that function to each of the items in turn, taking that value and using it to sort, which means that, of course, it's making, uh, we could pretty much call it a temporary mapping. These aren't integers. They don't end up as integers because, as you can see, they still remain strings in the sorted list. But it's as if we had created a temporary value for the purpose of sorting. Each string, when passed to func, returns an integer. So we've basically mapped these integer values to the string values, and we've used those integer values for the purposes of sorting. Okay, here's one more example, and you might want to try this out uh, on your own, see if you can actually solve it. We're sorting three strings, and the three strings represent uh, three people's names. Now, what if we wanted to sort these names by last name. They're still full names. They're still going to consist, and we're making the assumption that they consist of two names, a first and a last name. But what if we want Zeb Adams to come first, Joe Gibbs second, Amy West third? How could we get these strings to sort by last name? Here's how to think about it. And here are the questions that you would ask when you're writing a sort function. First question, um, what is an item, uh, what is an example of an item to be sorted? Second question, what value would I like that item to be sorted by? K 
can I write a function that takes the item to be sorted and returns the value by which we would have it be sorted. All right, take another look. What is an example of an item to be sorted? What is the value by which I would like it to be sorted? Can I write a function that takes the item to be sorted and returns the value by which we would have it be sorted? Now, you might want to read this over a couple of times just so that it's clear to you. And what I would have you do for a test exercise is see if you can write that function. Think about an item by which you would, I mean, sorry, one item to be sorted. So when I say an example of an item to be sorted, I'm talking about one of the items. We're sorting these items. We want to sort these items. This is what we're starting with. What is an example of an item that I'd like to sort? What's the value by which I would like that item to be sorted? And can I write a function that takes the item to be sorted? Now, as you know, we want to sort this string by the last name. So that's the hint. Uh, go ahead and pause your video, see if you can solve it. Okay, let's solve it. We want to sort these strings by the last name in each string. So we want to sort Joe Gibb by Gibb, Zeb Adams by Adams, Amy West by West. So let's go through the, the list, uh, the checklist here. What is an example of an item to be sorted? All right, let's just pick one. Joe Gibb, that's an example of an item to be sorted. Remember, the function is going to be called for each item. So we got to think about one item and decide how that should be manipulated. Okay, so that's an example of an item to be sorted. Joe Gibb, great. It's a string and it has two words in it. What's the value by which I'd like that item to be sorted. Well, I think I'd like it to be sorted by the value Gib, right? And of course, that'll be true of Zeb Adams and Amy West as well. It's the second word in the string. Okay, All right, number three. Can I write, so the answer here, of course, is Gib. And now finally, can I write a function that takes the item to be sorted and returns the value by which we would have it be sorted? Okay. Uh, well, if I take my string like Joe Gibb and maybe I'd like to uh, break it into items so that it's uh, got Joe and Gibb, right? I should then see uh, Joe and Gibb. And then I'd like to return, right? Returns the value by which? What's the value by which? Gibb. So I'm going to return items one. And that should get us what we're looking for. Zeb Adams, Joe Gibb, Amy West. These two word strings have been sorted by the second word in the string. Again, this limited example is assuming that each one of these strings is the same, although that's not a terrible assumption to make when you're working with consistent data. The point here, though, is that we went at this through a specific process, and this is the process that I would have you follow. Identify one object to be sorted. Decide what the value you would want that item to be sorted by is. In other words, Joe Gibb should be sorted by Gibb. So just take one example. Say, okay, here's the item, Joe Gibb. Uh, Here's the value I would like it to be sorted by, Gib. And then say, do we have a function that starts with Joe Gib and ends with Gib? Takes Joe Gib as an argument and returns Gib as the return value. Can you think of a function that would do that? Whatever lines you write is up to you. And the function can be as long as you want. It doesn't have to be a short function. It could be a very long function. And the function can do anything. The only restriction on these functions is that the function take one argument and return one value. The one argument is the item to be sorted. The one return value is the value by which it should be sorted. And that's it. That's complex sorting.
We'll do a similar example for the homework, and as usual, I've given a fair amount of way, but the main point is that you understand it, make sure you do understand it, and then apply it in a novel way in the homework, which is what we'll do. Not now, you'll be doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it in this video. What do you just want the answer? Yeah, you can you can you can think 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 twice. Think again. Think again. <laughs> Uh, but seriously, good luck and please uh, send me questions about the homework.